This is an overview of the changes made to Mover Suite at version 5.04. Starting out with changes affecting cash receipts and payment management, we have modified the cash receipt screen to allow you to select a customer. Prior to this release, you could enter a customer, but it was informational only. Now, with this enhancement, you can find the customer using the drop-down menu or by using the Customer Find. Once you select a customer, the associated orders populates with all invoices with OpenAR for the customer. A new Select column allows you to choose which orders you want linked to the receipt. Selected items appear for the batch in Payment Management where they are available for the Apply process. You can still add orders manually through the Add Orders option. Once you find and add the orders you want, the application automatically includes them on the receipt. The grid summarizes by the order, so once you save the receipt, the order groupings appear. You can expand this listing to view all invoices associated to the receipt for a given order. A new AR Balance column displays on this grid as well. You can also update the data associated to the customer. These modifications affect this receipt only and do not affect the customer record. Being able to change the customer information comes in handy when you may be dealing with a different party or representative of the company and may need to send the receipt to a different address. Please note that when you change the customer of the receipt, any modifications made to the customer information or to the associated orders are lost and you could modify a receipt as long as the batch is in any status other than in process, posted, or voided. The batch status is set through payment management. On the payment management side, the cash receipt lists the orders attached to the receipt. The application automatically populates the AR grid for the customer assigned to the payment. If adding orders to the payment manually using the find here, please note that the include customer flag is checked by default. This means that the find returns only orders with the customer matching the one on the payment. So, if the order you're looking for doesn't appear in the list, try unchecking this option and searching again. With this release, you could apply to a payment with AR from Dynamics GP as well as apply payables that come from GP. AR transactions created in Dynamics GP display automatically for an order within the existing AR section. Only positive AR display in this grid. You can use this AR to apply to the payment. Additionally, payables created in Dynamics GP also appear in payment application for the vendor. Payables with a positive amount automatically appear within the Accounts Payable section for the selected vendor. You can apply the positive payables amount to the payment. Payables not associated to an order are available within the No Order section. New payables added here display in A and new in the two new columns added to this grid. Of note, you'll be unable to apply with the new payables until transactions are generated for them through Dynamics GP. The document column displays the document number associated to the transaction. In Revenue Entry, we updated the Work Tickets tab to display the crew associated to the ticket and we added an option to view the work ticket through a right-click menu. And on the Summary tab, we now include a customer number along with a customer name in the AR Balance Summary section. When adding a local service, you can now select a different branch assignment for the service. The Branch field now allows you to modify the branch. You can enter the branch by name or click in the field to access the branch listing through the drop-down menu. This menu allows you to sort on name or the branch ID. Keep in mind that changing the branch affects the service setting. If the branch you select doesn't offer a matching service as a previously set branch, then the service field is cleared out. Another change to local services is the ability to associate containers, packing, and unpacking counts to each individual service. Prior to this release, you could only manage CPU counts at the order level. Now, when you add or edit a service, you can also set the CPU counts as well. The estimated counts entered here link this particular service and follow the service through dispatching and into revenue entry. We added two new options to this dialog as well. 
You can click here to import the counts set for the order through the Move Information tab. This is a great feature allowing you to quickly pull in the order estimated counts and autofill the counts for the service. We also gave you the ability to clear these counts. Creating information can now be tied to a particular service as well. And, just like for the CPU counts, you can import crate data from what is set at the order. And, remove what's in this grid as well. The crating data entered here, just like the CPU counts, is specific to each service. When you're done entering estimates, if you're on a service that refers to the carton count for computing labor, then you'll notice now that the counts are summarized here for you. Over in Local Dispatch, you can view and update these counts, just like before, through the right-click option. One difference is that the field label now reads CPU. If you haven't yet noticed, we've changed various wordings for this button throughout Mover Suite to be just CPU. We had many names for this feature, including CPU Estimates and CPU Quantities. Now just look for the CPU button. If the order counts set for the service are pulled from what is set for the order, then this caption displays. Otherwise, the counts and creating data relate to a particular service. And, dispatchers can update actuals for service-specific CPU as well. These actuals can import into revenue entry for transaction generation and invoicing. The standard work ticket report provided by Mover Suite has been modified to display estimates associated to each individual service. If no estimate exists for the service, then the counts are pulled from those set for the order. If your company has custom reports, please view all related reports and verify that they display CPU data correctly. We improved the way you can add multiple files to document management. In previous releases, you were able to add multiple documents to the viewer using the drag and drop feature. And now you can select and add multiple documents using the Attach button. When the Explorer dialog appears, just select one or more documents and press Open. The Attach Files screen appears for the first document you selected. Notice that there is a new option at the bottom of this screen. Whether adding through the Attach button or by drag and drop, this option allows you to use the properties of the first selected document for all other files added. This can save you a lot of time by reducing the number of entries you have to make for the document type, its description, and notes. You just need to set the document type, the description, and notes for one document, check this flag, and the application applies these attributes to all attached documents. Very cool! When computing the per pound amount associated to valuation, we now check the estimated weight of the order and use this value, if the hauled weight is not set. Prior to this release, we only referenced the hauled weight when computing the valuation amount. In the Tasks module, we now list the role set for the task user. This is due to the ability of the user to have multiple labor types or roles assigned to their personnel setup record. If the user has multiple roles assigned to them, they will display multiple times within the role column. Now, if the task user has multiple personnel records altogether, then they will continue to show as separate, unique records in this listing. Anytime you select a task user, such as here, and when adding or editing a task, you will see the user's role. We added a quick find to the claims module. This allows you to quickly look up an order. Just begin typing the starting value of the order you want, and after three characters, a list displays. Continue entering the characters to narrow the results down. If you can't remember what the order number begins with, you can use the percent character wildcard. This allows you to search for a certain string of characters anywhere in the order number. Another great feature of the quick find is the ability to recall recent orders. Click the drop-down icon to view a list of recent orders retrieved using the Quick Find. This list stores up to 25 of your recently searched orders. Select the order you want and the work area populates the claim data. As you can see, this feature allows you to quickly retrieve and work claims related to a specific order. Of note, you will only be able to see orders using the Find and Quick Find that you have access to, based on branch assignments to your personnel record. On the administrative side of things, we increased the Bill 2 contact field in the account profile setup to 61 characters.
Now this field matches the side as what is available for the billing contact in Microsoft Dynamics GP. And in the admin profile, under the Accounting and Financial Services section, we rename the Payment Management Code role to Statement Payment Code to better match what appears for the title of this setup area. With this release, there were quite a number of fixes as well, so please read about them through the What's New in Mover Suite section and the online help for this version. You can access online help for any release through our support page. Thank you for watching our video on the highlights of Mover Suite 5.04.